Alrighty, um, so this is the third and final video in our sequence on alternating series. Sequence on also, sorry. Um, so here we go. We're going to talk about absolute and conditional convergence. So we've talked about tests for convergence of a series, of an infinite series with positive terms. And so what, we'd, what I'd like to do now is talk, and we've also talked about, sorry, the alternating series test, if you have an alternating series. And so what I want to do now is to talk about a, a related concept, and let's suppose that we know that we have a convergent series. Whatever the series looks like, positive terms, alternating, pluses and minuses running wild. If the, the series is said to converge absolutely, if the sum of the absolute values converges. Otherwise, the series is said to converge conditionally. And so, of course, we have a theorem. Couldn't live without one. Okay, and the theorem says that if the series of the absolute values um, converges, then the series without the absolute values converges. And if the series without absolute values diverges, then the series with absolute values for sure has to diverge. So those two sentences are part of the theorem. So as a note, and I'll even put it in red because it's so important, if if uh, just to say that the series converges, right, that does not, all caps, underlined, mean that it converges absolutely. And we have an example of this that we know of very quickly. We know that the alternating harmonic series converges. But we know that the not alternating harmonic series diverges which is the absolute value. Okay, so we've talked about, uh, let's see, is that everything I wanna talk about? We did prove that the alternating series converged, did, didn't we somewhere? No, but I mentioned it, okay. Oh yeah, the textbook shows it. Okay, so, that's pretty much all it is to do it. So now we want to let's just do some examples where we determine whether the series diverges, converges absolutely, or converges conditionally. It's easiest to check for absolute convergence first because if we have that, then we're done. And so that's what we're going to do. Uh, check for absolute convergence first. Okay. I realize that the sun isn't out so much anymore, so that my face is in complete shadow but uh, we'll get the light on in a minute when my other half turns it on. And can you get the light on, please? Thanks. And hopefully that helps bring my face a little bit better into focus for you as opposed to the black blob that, uh, that it might have looked like. Alrighty, so we're going to look at the series summation. Negative one, uh, n equals 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n plus 1 over 2 to the n. So we're gonna check for absolute convergence first. So that means we're gonna look at the series with the absolute value of this. So first of all, this is just one over two to the N and we look at the convergence, we know, so what do we know about this little old series, right? Well, this we can write as we've done before, as one half to the n, and this is a geometric series. 
with r equaling one half, which is for sure less than one. So that tells us that it converges. And so since the uh, series with the absolute values converges, therefore our given series, which was this guy, converges absolutely. Okay, so good time to pause, see if you have any questions, write them down so you can ask on Monday. Um, I guess Monday would probably not be a good day because it would be nice if you actually looked at it first. Um, Tuesday or Wednesday, I'm not really sure. All right, let's do another example. Um, we got the summation uh, k equals zero to infinity, negative 10 to the k over k factorial. So first of all, hopefully you do believe that this is an awesome uh, a series. Uh, sure, it's awesome, I said so. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is check for absolute convergence. Because if we have that, we have everything. So the what's the absolute value of negative 10 to the k over k factorial? Well, you just get rid of the negative. We get 10 to the k over k factorial. Hmm. All right, does this one converge? That's a good question, right? So we're gonna have to check it out. Hmm. What shall we compare it to? All right. So what do you think? What do you think would be, uh, I realized that the test I used to prove, to check that this converges probably would be a bad choice right now because we haven't actually covered it. So gonna have to think of another way to do this problem. Let's see, what shall we do? Well, the divergence test won't help because the limit's gonna be zero. The integral test is useless because we can't integrate. So I guess that's gonna bring us to the comparison test or the limit comparison test. All right, so hmm, what shall we do? So usually for the comparison test or the limit comparison test, we wanna try to compare it with something that's maybe a P-series or something to that effect, but, uh, or maybe a geomet or a geometric series. And neither one of those is gonna be a, a, a blessing to us. Well, let's see, what can we do? No, actually we can make this do a geometric series, right? Okay, what, you're gonna, you might be looking at me right now and going, she's smoking something, she must be smoking something, but let's bear with me. We know that k factorial is for sure, grows way slower than k to the k. But who cares about that? We know that. I don't care about this. k factorial is k times k minus one, all the way down to two times one, right? So if k is greater than or equal to 10, then k factorial is gonna be always greater than or equal to 10, times nine times eight, all the way down to two times one, which is greater than or equal to, which is greater than actually, um, 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, um, let's say K times. Uh, probably 10 is not a great choice, let's do 11. I'm trying to think of something that's going to work. Sugarfoot. Okay, bear with me a minute. When we learn the ratio test next chapter, though, this is going to be so much easier. So same principle, though. This is K times. So this is 11 to the K. All right, so 
we know that a sub k is 10 to the k over k factorial is less than or equal to um, 10 to the k over 11 to the k is 10 over 11 to the k and call that b sub k at least for k greater than or equal to 10. Since we know that the summation from k equals 1 to infinity of 10 to the k over k uh, over sorry 0 to infinity of 10 over 11 to the k converges because it's a geometric series with r equals 10 over 11th which is less than 1 Right, since we know this is true, um, by the comparison test, the summation k equals, I don't even remember what it was, zero to infinity of 10 to the k over k factorial converges which gives us that our original series converges absolutely. Now, is there anything that I did that seems a little eh. hinky, off, screwy? Well, you might say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You just said that this is only true for k greater than or equal to 11, but you're looking at the entire series. And that's okay. Remember, we only care, you know, because this series is summing for infinity. So if there's a few terms that don't follow the rule, it's okay. Dang, this really is not lighting very well today. I'm really sorry. Okay, so... Again, pause, think of questions, write them down so you can ask me. And moving on. Next example. I want to say this is the, this might be the last example. I want to say that, but I'd be lying. Um, no, I wouldn't. Mm, nope. Uh, well, I mean, kind of, not exactly. Okay, this one looks nasty, doesn't it? Okay, so again, check for absolute convergence. All right, let's do this. So absolute value of my terms. I guess I don't need the absolute value anymore. Square root of k plus one minus square root of k. All right. Um, let's check if this converges. We cannot use the divergence test, right? Because if I take the limit of this, it's um, indeterminate. And then I would have to rationalize it, so I would get zero. So first thing to note is that this guy, I'm going to do the exact opposite of what your algebra teacher taught you. So I'm going to times this numerator and denominator by square root of k plus 1 plus square root of k. So I'm going to get 1 over square root of k plus 1 plus square root of k. Okay, so now let's get this. Uh, we're going to have to, well, I don't I sure don't want to integrate, although we could have done the integral. No, nope, the integral test would give us the same problem. So we're going to have to, huh. All right, maybe the integral test would have worked, but I didn't think of it. So let's just keep going. Uh, we're going to use uh, one of the comparison tests. So um, first of all, I hope that you can agree that this is true. Right? Because square root of k plus 1 is greater than or equal to square root of k. So I get square root of k plus square root of k is 2 root k. 
So that tells me that one over root k plus one plus square root of k is less than or equal to one over two root k. Um, and we see that the summation k going from one to infinity of one over two root k, that diverges, right? Because that equals, let's say one half summation k equals one to infinity, one to the k half, this diverges because it's a p series and p is a half, which is less than one. And so that tells me that we can't use the comparison test, but we have to use the limit comparison test. Right, so. Mm -hmm. This is my A sub K. And this is my B K. So let's just take the limit as k goes to infinity of a k over b k is going to be the limit as k goes to infinity of one over square root of k plus one plus square root of k divided by one over two root k which is going to be the limit as k goes to infinity of two root k over square root of k plus one plus square root of k <clears throat> And um, if I multiply the numerator and, well, she, that didn't go well, did it? What just happened here? Hmm. Okay, let's just pause this for a second. Any year now.